apologize for the pothead questions ahead of time, but uh, will, <laughs> do you think uh, we'll be able to simulate a model, the origin of life? So being able to simulate the first, from from non-living organisms, the, the birth of a living organism. I think that's a one of the, of course, one of the deepest and most fascinating questions. Um, I love that area of biology. You know, uh, there's people like there's a great book by Nick Lane, one of the top top experts in this area, called the the Ten Great Inventions of 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 Evolution. I think it's fantastic, and it also speaks to what the great filters might be. You know, prior or are they ahead of us? I think I think they're most likely in the past. If you read that book, of how unlikely to go, you know, have any life at all, and then single cell to multi cell seems an unbelievable unbelievably big jump that took like a billion years, I think, and yeah. on earth to do, right? So it shows you how hard it was, right? Bacteria were super happy for a very for long time. For a very time. long time <laughs> before they captured mitochondria somehow, right? I don't see why not, why AI couldn't help with that, some kind of simulation. Again, it's again, it's a bit of a search process through a combinatorial space. Here's like all the, chem, you know, the chemical soup that, that you start with, the primordial soup that, you know, maybe was on earth near these hot vents. Here's some initial conditions. Can you uh, generate something that looks like a cell? So perhaps that would be a next stage after the virtual cell project is, well, how, how could you actually um, something like that emerge from the chemical soup? Well, I would love it if there was a move 37 for the origin of life. Yeah. I think that's one of the sort of great mysteries. I think ultimately what we will figure out is their continuum. There's no such thing as a line between non-living and living. But if we can make that rigorous. Yes. That, that the very thing from the big, big Bang to today has been the same process. And if we can break down that wall that we've constructed in our minds of the actual origin of from non-living to living, and it's not a line, that it's a continuum, that connects physics and chemistry and biology. Yeah. As there's no line. I mean, this is my whole reason why I've worked on AI and AGI my whole life, because I think it can be the ultimate tool to help us answer these kind of questions. And I don't really understand why, um, you know, the average person doesn't think like worry about this stuff more like how, <laughs> how how can we not have a good definition of life and not and not living and non-living and <laughs> the nature of time and let alone consciousness and gravity and all these things yeah. it's it's just and quantum mechanics weirdness it's just to me it's i've always had this, this sort of screaming at me in my face the whole and it, that's yeah. it's getting louder you know it's like how what is going on here you know in in the, and i mean that in the deeper sense like in the you know the nature of reality which has to be the ultimate question yeah. uh, that yeah. would answer all of these things it's sort of crazy if you think about it we can stare at each other and all these living things all the time we can inspect it in microscopes and take it apart uh, almost down to the atomic level and yet we still can't answer that clearly yeah. in a simple way that question of how do you define living yeah. it's kind of amazing yeah living you can kind of talk your way out of thinking about but like consciousness like we have this very obviously subjective conscious experience like we're at the center of our own world and it it feels like something and then how how, how are you not screaming <laughs> yeah at, at the mystery of it all right. we haven't i mean but really humans have been contending with the mystery of the world around them uh, for a long long there's a lot of mysteries like what's up with the sun and and the rain yeah like what's that about and then like last year we had a lot of rain and this year we don't have rain like what did we do wrong P humans have been asking that question yeah. for a long time exactly so we're quite i guess we've developed a lot of mechanisms to cope with this yeah. uh, these deep mysteries that we can't fully we can see but we can't fully understand and we have to have to just get on with daily life yeah. and 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 we get we keep ourselves busy right in a way do we keep ourselves distracted <laughs> <laughs> i mean weather is one of the most important questions of human history we still that's that's the go to small talk direction of, yes, <laughs> of the weather especially in england yeah. and, and then it's which is you know famously is an extremely difficult system to model yeah. and uh even that system uh uh, Google DeepMind has made progress on. Yes, we've we are, we've created the the best weather prediction systems in the world, and they're better than traditional fluid dynamics sort of systems that are usually calculated on massive supercomputers takes days to calculate it. Um, we've managed to model a lot of the weather dynamics with neural network systems with our weather next system. And again, it's interesting that those kinds of dynamics can be modeled, even though they're very complicated, almost bordering on chaotic systems in some cases. A lot of the interesting aspects of that, 
um, uh, can be modeled by these neural network systems, including very recently we had, you know, cyclone prediction of where, you know, paths of hurricanes might go, of course, super useful, super important for the world. And, and, and it's super important to do that very timely and very quickly and as well as accurately. And uh, I think it's a very promising direction, again, of, you know, simulating and uh, uh, so that you can run forward predictions and simulations of very complicated real world systems. I should mention that uh, I've got a chance in uh, Texas to meet a community of folks called the Storm Chasers. Yes. And w what's really incredible about them, I need to talk to them more, is they're extremely tech savvy mm -hmm. because what they have to do is they have to use models to predict where the storm yes. is. So they're, it's, this, <laughs> it's, it's this beautiful mix of like crazy yeah. enough to like go into the eye of the storm yeah. and like in order to protect your life and predict where the extreme events are going to be, they have to have increasingly sophisticated models of uh, of weather. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a, a beautiful balance of like being in it as living organisms and the, the cutting edge of science. So they actually might be using uh, DeepMind systems. So that's... Yeah, they are, hopefully they are. And I, I'd love to join them in one of those checks. <laughs> they look amazing, right? To actually experience it one time. Exactly. Yeah. And then also to experience the correct prediction yeah. of where something will come yeah. and how it's going to evolve. It's incredible. Yeah.